Borrowing books made easy. We deliver books to your doorstep. Sign up now at mybookshelf.com.pk. Hi everyone, today on The Tea with My Bookshelf, I will be chatting with the lovely Farzeen Ali, who is the co-founder of the Karachi Down Syndrome Program and founder of Be Gutsy PK, which my kid and I are big fans of. So let's have some tea with Farzeen Ali. Farzine, I'm so glad our schedules worked out and you could be here today. Thank you for having me. It's sure. been a pleasure. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up and how that affected the adult that you've become. Right. So I uh, was born in Riyadh um, and I think it was a point in time in my parents' life, well, most, more specifically my dad's life, where I think he was trying to search for what his passion was. So there was a lot of going back and forth from Saudi to the US and all of that, okay. and then back to Karachi. Um, so the first two, three years were like that. And then we spent about uh, three or four years in Dubai. Um, and this is at the time when Dubai is not what it is today. It was, yeah. <laughs> we lived in a very small village. It was a little British community. Um, we used to walk to school. Um, so that, uh, very fond childhood memories mm -hmm. there. Um, and then we moved back to Karachi and we, uh, when I was around seven and we've been here since. So I do feel that the places where you grow up and where you live, they have a significant impact yeah. on the person that you are and <laughs> out oh, yeah. in Karachi, especially. And then coming back and sort of adjusting to being in the city. In, well, I think we were we were quite young, so we adjusted yeah. easily, like all children do end uh -huh. up uh, adjusting. It was a bit of a struggle because my Urdu was really bad yeah. at that time because we were going to a British school. Um, so lots of bullying happening there, but um, oh but yeah, but it's been it's been nice. I mean, I I wouldn't have it any other way. Karachi is Karachi. You love it and then you hate it and then you love it again. So Yes, we all have so, that relationship yes. with this city for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of, um, I think that's the adult part that you mentioned and how it's affected me. I feel like Karachi is a very chaotic city, but I mean, there are lots of bad parts to it, but so much of heart in it also, right? Yeah. So whenever there's a crisis, everyone just comes together. It's such a community feel. And I That's think true. there is a little bit of that in all of us, all yeah. of us living here. So, so yeah, so okay. that's, so that's where I'm from, <laughs> Karachi. <laughs> <laughs> so Farzeen, you started this fantastic venture, Be Gutsy, by mm -hmm. which you um, make and sell water kafir in delicious flavors. Right. What is water kafir and what made you interested in doing this? So water kafir is something that I had not known about at all before the pandemic happened. Um, and it's basically a fermented probiotic beverage mm -hmm. and it's great for gut health because it has that probiotic content in it. Um, so probiotics are basically good bacteria, right? And mm -hmm. the largest uh, amount of it live in our gut. So basically anything that is probiotic, especially fermented foods, um, they can help rebalance your gut. And our gut is basically, it's also called the second brain. Um, yes. I'm sure you know. Yes, my second brain yes. has messed with me a lot. Yes, yes I know. <laughs> and even with a lot of other people too, I'm sure, yeah. considering what our lifestyles are like and how our yeah. diets are now, our modern day diets. So um, how it started with me or for me was um, when the when COVID hit, um, we went into complete lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, my older daughter has Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, there was really no um, kind of information regarding how COVID would affect people with Down syndrome because they're generally considered to be immunocompromised. Okay. So which is why there was like, no contact with the outside world for nearly three months. 
and you know we would just go around sanitizing everything that would come inside the house and just like at a very crazy level yeah which many people did yes to be fair yeah, yeah. i suppose because <laughs> cleaning the doorknobs yes. and everything right because nobody knew anything any yes. better right and there yeah. was such little information um but my god basically <laughs> said or you know it kept saying that this can't be the only way this it it can't be this way right there has to be another way to do it So I mean, if we're protecting ourselves from the outside, I'm sure there's a way to make ourselves stronger from the inside too. Mm. If we're, you know, if we're dealing with this virus, so I started reading, 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 and then it led me down this rabbit hole of gut health and how important it is, and how 80% of our immunity resides in our gut. And if our gut is balanced and in tip-top shape, then you're good to go for yeah. like many of these kind of things that keep happening and will continue to happen. Um so so it was basically I suppose a mother's love you can yeah. call it so I started with uh, any so any any fermented food generally has probiotic content yes. in it so I started with pickles but my kids didn't take to that too yeah, well Yeah I, I can see how that would happen <laughs> oh, although I love them I'm chewing on them all the time um and then I came across water kefir and how it's a like very kid friendly drink and how you can flavor it any way you want so I tried that out um and it was pretty much a success as far yeah. as my kids are concerned and what i would do is i would actually freeze it into popsicles and then give it to them because you can flavor it in yeah. any way you want so there were strawberry popsicles and orange popsicles and all of them and that's when it took off and then i started sharing it with friends and family started posting it on instagram bit by bit and yeah. you know kind of getting other people curious because many people although there it is available in the market for a while Um, yeah, but it t- yours people. tastes really good, oh, though. Thank you, thanks so much. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, then more people kept on asking. Okay, yeah, let us try some. Let us try some. And then, yeah, keep on giving us a regular supply. And I'm like, hang on here. <laughs> I think I need to kind of formalize this and kind of launch it as a proper product. And that's how it happened. Yeah, yeah. it's great that you did. So you've mentioned that probiotics are good for gut health, yeah. and um, but on your Insta page, you've you've written, you've listed a lot more benefits yes. of water kefir. Yes. Can you expand yes, on those? Yes, absolutely. So. Like I said, if your gut is good, then it's b- basically whole body health is connected to your gut, mm-hmm. right? So if your gut is in balance or you're doing things that are helping your gut stay in balance, then you are basically helping your overall body. So um the gut specifically has a direct connection to the brain, which is called the gut brain access. The gut has a direct relationship to the skin, which is called the gut skin access. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's and then the vagus nerve which is like connected to the every single part of your body um so i mean through the gut brain access if your gut is in balance and it's making all the hormones and all the all the um neurotransmitters sorry okay. the neurotransmitters that go up to your brain um so basically you have you know you have you're generally in a bit in a better mood I, and I actually felt all these changes myself when I started having water kefir on a, on a regular basis and I mean not that I'm pushing people to have it or but or but I will advocate for it because it really made a huge difference to my life so after I started having it I was sleeping better I found myself to be generally more pleasant than I usually oh, wow. am um, now how much should a person have because I remember when my son and I first started having it I w- I think I messaged you yeah. And I was like I'm having like 3 4 glasses a day. Is that okay? <laughs> and you were like yeah. No, no. <laughs> so what is like a good amount to have a day? So ideally it should be about a glass a day. Right? Okay. You don't want to even overdo it because yeah. it is it is a low sugar drink but it does contain sugar. It's yeah. not like it doesn't. Yeah. So you want to kind of, you know, be careful about how much sugar you're also having. Yeah. Um so ideally one glass a day early in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I remembered that yeah. after <laughs> So um uh, you had mentioned that in water kefir there are billions I think of yes. the good bacteria yes. and it's fermented and mm-hmm. it has these cool bubbles everywhere and mm-hmm. such wonderful flavors you make um how hard was it to learn how to make it how long did that take you It's been a, like a trial and error quite a bit I can um, imagine, I've yeah. had exploding bottles and have <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So obviously there are a few variables that you need to be very mindful of when you're making water kefir. One major one is the temperature, uh, the the ambient temperature in which the okay. in which it's being fermented in. Um 
but I feel like more than it's not that difficult to learn. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy, but I think more than that, it's more of a commitment because it's something. So the culture that you have, the water kefir grains that are called that ferment the sugar water. They're basically like my pets, like honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to like make sure that they have adequate amounts of food, that they're at the right temperature, that they're happy. So in the winter, they slow down completely, right? Because the okay. temperature becomes cooler. And yeah. like us, they're like all like lazy and they're like, we don't want to work. <laughs> um, so, so they're very similar to that. And plus they need constant supervision, like around the clock, honestly. Every 24 hours, you have to change the water and let mm -hmm. them kind of, uh, you know, flavor it and then... So, it, it's, so it's a long process. It's kind of like a puppy. <laughs> it is. It is very much so. Yes. And I actually feel like that towards them also. Mostly because they really rewarded me in yeah. so many ways. Yeah. Um, but also because um, I think they're just a fantastic gift of nature that, you know, that is so underrated, so unappreciated and that can really like help us achieve that whole body health that mm -hmm. I think many people And need. something so small, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this is going to sound like a funny question, but I'm really curious, like, where did you initially get the initial the grains from? bacteria? Like, right. where did they come from? So I bought yeah. them. I bought okay. them from the US. Yeah. Right. So so you can even find them here. There are local suppliers who import the grains. So they come in this dried form and then you kind of put them in the sugar water and activate them. So Farzine, um, just a little bit of change in the subject. Sure. You are the co-founder of the Karachi Down Syndrome Program. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about KDSB and your involvement in it? Right, where do I start? Um, so my husband and myself were the co-founders of KDSP. Um, it started when with the birth of our own daughter. Mm -hmm. So this was 11 years ago. Um, so when she was born, um, it was obviously a difficult time for us. She, was, uh, she wasn't too well when she was born. She was born six weeks premature. Mm -hmm. And then she had all of these like series of like um, really like major health issues right after. Um, but I think what happened after we brought her home was that when I started reaching out and kind of trying to look for places or people who would kind of guide me, OK, you know, what exactly does it entail? Mm. What is her future here in Karachi, in Pakistan? Um, where are are there any other people who have children with Down syndrome? And it was um, a very uphill kind of, you know, journey, um, getting people to actually um, talk about it or or even like getting the right kind of information. So okay. even with doctors, for example, we would go to them and they would tell me something. And I would come back and kind of do my own research yeah. online. It would often be very, you know, not what they had told me. And it was very, it was such a confusing and a very, very lonely you yeah, know, experience, imagine, yes. right? Because yeah. you feel like you're the only one. Yeah. And I would say the first six months were the toughest because you go through that whole thing where you're in denial first and then you're like raging uh, at God, you know, why me? Yeah. And why did this have to happen to me? And all yeah. of that. And then you kind of come back to accept. And then obviously you have that child in front of you who you can see is a is a like a human being who yeah. is so capable of showing their emotions and showing love and loving you back and you know so um so we were actually very very lucky in the sense that we had the resources to take our daughter to the u.s and when we took her there we took her to the boston children's hospital they have a excellent down syndrome program mm -hmm. and it was a whole different world so when we arrived at the reception, there was a gentleman with Down syndrome who was greeting us and handing out our the intake okay. forms to us, right? And we uh -huh. were like, how? You know, because we were given a completely different picture here. So this opened sort of a whole another world of possibilities yes, for you guys. Yes, and yeah. hope, you know, yeah. most of all. Yeah. So um, we then we came back and we we're like, okay, listen, if we don't do something about people with Down syndrome here, I mean, we are educated, we have whatever connections you might want mm -hmm. to start something up. Um, we have friends and family in the right places who can help us, um, then who will, right? So when our daughter turned three, we decided that we would um, set this program up. It started off from our dining table, actually. And um, yeah, and it's come a long way since then. It's yeah. been eight years now. It started in 2014. 
Yeah. When we started to set it up in 2014. Sorry, six, seven years now. So six years. Um, and you guys yeah. also host a very large carnival on like, World every year, Down Syndrome yes, Day? Yes, yes. Yeah. So 21st March is World Down Syndrome Day every yeah. year. Um, so it started off initially as an awareness raising event. Mm-hmm. Um, more so just to kind of make people see that people with Down syndrome are so much more similar than, mm-hmm. you know, we have or we grew up with this image of people with disabilities being the other or being yes. different. And there was not too much of, you know, there was no interaction facilitated or encouraged or it yeah. was so much of stigma and so much of taboo absolutely um, you know associated with it um and that's what we wanted to kind of break right so have like a very fun environment and people of all disabilities from all backgrounds to just come together and have yeah. a great time and yeah we just had our last um you know our pre uh the, this for this year our carnival for this year and it went amazing it was so great it and was very well attended we, right yes so yes yes yeah. so we're 5,000 people, I believe, yeah. Wow, yeah. That's, that's huge. <laughs> yeah. So Farzine, what impact has the Karachi Down Syndrome program made in dispelling some of the stigma and the myths also surrounding Down Syndrome? Right. The grandest achievement of KDSP would probably be that it has managed to kind of empower parents enough for them to be able to release whatever shame that used Mm. to come with having a child with an intellectual disability. Um, I know I definitely felt it when my daughter was born, um, that that it was something that I did that, you know, that made it happen or, you know, just the universe like conspiring against me. Mm. So much shame and um, especially I think the older generation and there have been so many almost like horror stories that parents have brought to us and how they were treated because they had this child who had a disability. Okay. Um, So I think it finally gave them the courage to kind of stand up with their child in in a very um, proactive and a very proud way. And, you know, say that... So advocate for them. Yes. And saying that, you know, my kid does have Down syndrome, but so what? You know, I mean, they can achieve whatever, you know, their potential is. Um, and they just need the right opportunities for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel that with that um, comes, you know, the, dis- the dispelling of all the myths that you mentioned, because we we used to think that, OK, you know, people with Down syndrome can't do much, that yeah. they're they're, you know, for most of the for most uh, part, they're a burden on the families that they come into. And that's totally changed. I mean, at KDSP, we have adults with Down syndrome come in and they make all these handicrafts in which we we sell them um, on their behalf and we give them the money back. Mm -hmm. So they're actually earning members of the family, whereas before, you know, they were just considered a huge liability, but now they're actually contributing. Yeah. Um, So I feel like empowering parents has been has been a game changer as far as yes. you know this belly because they can now actually stand up for their kid and say you yeah know, don't you know don't talk about my child that way yeah. right i mean they're human and maybe for them also then they were able to see what you mentioned before hope yeah and possibility yes. and opportunity yes and i think that comes when you have a community right yeah. So yeah. I think by bringing people together, by bringing families together, that has really strengthened, you know, them and mm-hmm. uh, and consequently their their kids and their and their futures. So in this community, then are the parents sort of is it like people are friends with each other, and then the children also get to interact with each oh, other? Oh yes, it's yes. Like so that. we have we okay. have monthly support group meetings. So KDSP actually started off as a support group, right? Okay. Because that's how we started off. We're like, how yeah. do we do this? Yeah. So. It, I mean, I'd like to narrate a incident or a story Please that do. we started off with. Yeah. So, so when we this is in 2014, and we decided to launch KDSP on World Down Syndrome Day with a photo campaign, and this photo campaign was supposed to go up on. And this is a time when there were lots of billboards around the city. Yes. This is before that storm had come and wrecked havoc yeah. everywhere. Um, so this is uh, so we decided that we'd have a photo campaign. We'd we'd shoot um, ten. Uh, children with Down syndrome and their families together mm-hmm. and kind of normalize, you know, the differences that come with Down syndrome. Okay. And we put up those pictures, um, uh, you know, on these billboards all around the city. 
So we decided we'd have 10 families, right? So by then we'd have, we'd, we'd known enough people to be able to gather such a crowd and we reached out to them and said, you know, so, you know, would you like your child to come in and we need a picture of, you know, either you and your child or, you know, the child and their sibling. So we just wanted to make, um, you know, make the relationship with that person with Down syndrome um, you know, kind of come out in the forefront and okay. say, you know, there there is so much l the possibility of love is like yeah. so real. Yeah. Just, just look for it, right? Yeah. Um, so we wanted 10 families, 10 people in dance room and we could only get seven okay. because people were so hesitant to come yeah, out. Yeah, they don't want to come out. Yeah, right? and yeah. have their faces plastered yeah. up on billboards alongside their family member with Down syndrome. Okay. Um, and now what happens is that we get phone calls, like com people complaining and families complaining, you know, you did this ad or you did this campaign and you did not include us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? And we've been members for so long and la la la. So I think well, that's uh, where you can really see the change yeah. that you've affected. Yeah. That must be so fulfilling. It, it really, I mean, I have no words. Honestly, it's, I say it every single time. It's, to other people, it might seem like it's been so challenging or the idea of having a child with Down syndrome or intellectual disability. And I'm not saying that it's not hard. It yeah. is very, very hard on many days, but yeah. it is so rewarding. Also, like it really, I just, I don't have the words to honestly yeah. <laughs> describe how fulfilling it is and how much she has changed her our lives for the better, mm -hmm. the absolute better um yeah and we're just so blessed talking about children and hope and possibilities mm -hmm. um what should we be teaching our children about where they source their self-worth from because you know like in our society it's you know school and grades mm -hmm. and performance mm -hmm. and then you have the social media for right. the aesthetics yeah what do you think about this right um interestingly i just finished this book um it's called uh, What Happened to You. A very funny title. Oh, I don't know if okay. you've heard about it. It's been co-written by Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Bruce Perry, who is a neuroscientist. And um, so your question of how we can teach our children about self-worth. And where to not, source it from. Yeah, yeah, so the onus does not lie on the children. The onus actually lies on the parents, right? So I'm sure you've heard the saying where... Um, the way we talk to our children becomes their inner voice, yes. right? Yes. And that is where their self-worth st stems from. It's if you have not been given <clears throat> this, that sense of love and belonging in your earlier years, you can't, there's no way to get it later on, right? Because I mean, if it, it comes from, a, it comes from your parents. So it's an external source initially. At yes, least. yes. Yeah. And, and that, yeah. that external source kind of becomes your internal source later on because that if that's how your brain has been wired since the beginning mm -hmm. then that's how you're going to perceive everything too yeah so in that book very interestingly uh, dr bruce perry has done all this like fantastic research on your on neuroscience related and he talks about how the first three months of a child basically and how that child is treated that baby is treated in the first three months of their life basically determines the entire trajectory of their their lives and how um resilient they'll be and wow. how, yeah and how, how much pressure for a parent how much that? pressure for a parent but also how the importance of support needed yeah. for a new parent especially a new mother in our society right and instead of all this other stuff that we keep piling on her. Yeah. Um, but so the, he talks about how if a child is treated with love and warmth in the first three months of their life and actually faces neglect and abuse for the next 12 years, that child has a better chance of leading a fulfilling life than a child who has been neglected and abused in the first three months of their life and Oh been gosh. through a very good childhood for the next That's 12 years. so interesting. It is and fantastic. Kind of scary. <laughs> it is very scary. It is the power that we have over our kids. Yes. It is very scary. And I bet every parent thought about the first three months of their <laughs> yeah. kids' lives. <laughs> yeah, so... And this book is called What Happened to what You. What Happened to You. So the premise okay. is that you should not say to someone, hey, what's wrong with you? As opposed to, hey, uh, what happened to you? Right? Okay, okay. Like an inquiry as opposed to like a negative kind of 
yeah. like a blame almost like what's wrong with you mm-hmm. you know so it's like what happened to you like because it has to come from somewhere mm-hmm. you know the behavior stems from somewhere so where does that come from and it comes in the whole like when the brain is developing in the early years so yes yeah, self worth also comes from there so yeah. it comes from our parents and um yes i believe that when we grow older we may have neuroplasticity to change our ble- brain and how it's wired but mm-hmm. it requires i feel like an immense amount of self discipline and many and possibly people also self awareness yes yes absolutely yeah. 100% self awareness reflection and yeah. you know kind of looking inward all the time but many people don't have those tools right no so, so, so they can't do the inner work yes, then yes yes yeah. and then that it's it's generational that all that trauma that's passed mm-hmm. down Yeah. So it's important to be able to break that cycle, you know. Okay, I'm yeah. going to get this book. Please do. Yeah. Highly recommend it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um so you and I Farzeen met some years ago in a mindfulness course. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you, do you think there is ever a point where a person can say, okay, I've worked on myself enough, I've improved on myself enough, I am mm. now complete. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Short answer and definite no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely no. Um uh, I think it's uh there's a saying by I think it's Socrates, Socrates. Mm-hmm. And I think he says that the wisest man is the one who knows that he or she knows nothing, right? Ah, okay. Um I mean we live in a world that is constantly changing right I mean there's so many variables and so many factors and all that constant change requires a lot of adaptability and a lot of adaptability adaptability that that skill comes from just constantly learning yes and I feel like um there's no end to that it's a lifelong process and you have to stay humble Yeah, one is always yeah. a student of life, I yes. guess. Yeah. Yes. So, uh what sort of actions in a person's life do you think have the longest reaching consequences? And for you, what is something you have done that has reverberated positively over the years? I think we just spoke about um inner work, yeah. self-reflection. Mm-hmm. I don't think there is anything else that can show up in a person's life. you know that has such a huge impact as that can right as so self reflection yes looking okay. inward and reflecting and building your self awareness yeah um uh like we met, like we spoke about before about how all of this can be transferred from one generation to another so mm-hmm. it's not only restricted to your own life but also to the life of your own children mm-hmm. and their children because if they've been scarred by things that we've done i mean they'll pass those yes. wounds on uh, forward so um i th- i feel like so this is something i've recently learned this whole self reflection in okay. we're looking bit i would say about the time when we met um yeah. six or seven years ago yes So you know how they say um you have to lose your way first before you can find yourself yeah. right so i think around that time i was going through a, a lot uh in my personal life and um i feel like that kind of triggered you know the whole thing of okay you know what is what is what is all of this mean like why am i going through all of this and okay I and see. i um I started therapy. Mm-hmm. I sought out therapy and best decision I've ever made. Highly recommend it yeah. to everyone. <laughs> um because it really helps to kind of be sh- you know for someone to hold up a mirror to you and okay. kind of yeah. you know kind of tell you or show you the patterns of behavior that are not serving you yes, and that absolutely. don't serve your relationships as a result also right it's really hard sometimes to look in that mirror yeah i mean yeah. i'm i'm assuming it can be done on by oneself also but it would require a tremendous amount of discipline and oh, yeah. openness to you know kind of accept um so yeah i feel like this journey that started about like 6 7 years ago has really It's made a lot of positive changes to my life, yeah. and knowing myself better. And finally, uh where do you find meaning in your life? Where do I find meaning, right? So 
I would have to say in my service to others, how I can help other people. Okay. Um, I think I've found that in KDSP for sure. Yeah. Um, but also in a way through Be Gutsy, because there's so many people who reach out um, and who have all these health problems and they cannot pinpoint mm-hmm. uh, you know, to where it's stemming from because there is such little awareness of how important the role of our gut is and the role of our digestion is in our overall well-being. Um, so I think raising awareness about that is just, you know, great for yeah. people to, for people to be, become more aware of how their body works. I think the well-being of my children is really high up there when yeah, it comes to, you know, um, when yeah. it comes to this, um, also my own personal growth, I would have to say, that's where I find meaning, you know, to just constantly strive. Okay. Becoming a lifelong learner. I feel like, you know, how do I. How do I make myself better? What can I do? Yeah. So I think it's great that you included yourself in there because usually, you know, once you're a mother yeah. and you have all these external oh gosh, demands yes. on you, we tend to forget about ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. And that the dark phase of my life that I was mentioning to you, that, yeah. that happened right after my second one was born. And okay. it was literally so overwhelming, which is why I also mentioned the support that a parent needs, mm-hmm. right? When, yeah. um, when they have small children and young children. And going back to that book, um, the one that I mentioned yes. to you, he also talks about how we're hardwired for community living. So, I mean, no matter how much we bash um, um, joint families, yeah. there are so many advantages to it because a parent or a mom is not made to look after her children by herself, right? Mm-hmm. It's a, a village raises a child. I've also read this. So, that, yeah. So it's... Um, so yeah, all connected. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Farzee, now I have some rapid fire questions for you. All right. Okay. Who is your hero? My hero um, has to be all the women who are reclaiming their space and dismantling the patriarchy. Oh, nice. And also... Power. The, yes. <laughs> and also, also have to acknowledge the men who are recognizing how... The, the issues and the problems that come with such an imbalance of power. I feel like they are they, they also should be acknowledged. So yeah, they're my heroes too. Okay, yeah. cool. Are you neat or messy? Um, hmm. I think people who are close to me would beg to differ. But, <laughs> but organized messiness is what I thrive in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> would you rather have the power of invisibility or supersonic hearing? Oh, invisibility, for sure. Right? Yeah, I yeah, know. yeah, for sure. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Too much chatter anyway. Yeah. I'd rather see what's happening. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you say you are an introvert or an extrovert? Um, I think it depends on the people who I'm with. Mm. Um, but I think for the most part, definitely an introvert. Okay. Yeah. What was the last thing you searched on Google? Oh, that's easy. Uh, iftar time, Karachi today. Oh, okay. <laughs> If you could talk to yourself at age 18, what would you tell 18-year-old you? Oh my gosh, so much. Um, I know, right? Yeah, so That's much of learning. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think two things for sure. I think ask more questions. Mm. I think from myself and from other people. Be more curious, basically. And also to learn how to set stronger boundaries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's an important yeah. one. Yep. What part of a children's movie scarred you? Um, Mufasa's death in The Lion King. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very traumatic, yeah. <laughs> Heartbreaking. And finally, um, what is your favorite book of all time? Favorite book of all time. Recently, this one that I just keep mentioning throughout yes. because I just what mentioned happened what you? happened to you. Yeah. Um, also, Becoming Supernatural. Okay. Yeah, that's one. And I have recently started this new one, which is very, like, very quickly becoming a favorite of mine. It's called oh. The Body Keeps a Score. Okay. They're all neuroscience related. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I think that's been my uh, focus for the past couple of years. Um, okay. So, so yeah. Okay, that's great. Right. Yeah. So Farzine, thank you so much for coming in. I had such a good time chatting oh with you. Oh my gosh, same, same, absolutely. I'm so glad this worked out and... Um, just want to acknowledge that um, 
I, you don't find many spaces on the internet where you know you can kind of have all of these deep and introspective conversations yeah. and just want to appreciate that that oh. you have that little corner of your space that is uh, you know making this happen thank you so uh, much yeah, That's I, mean, so I think kind it reminds of you. us it just reminds us of uh, how the humanness if that's a word our yeah. own humanity right when yes. you when we talk about such things as opposed to just small talk yeah, yeah. absolutely so, so yeah so it's great so thank you for having thank me thank you so much farzeen no. and guys um if you want to learn more about the karachi down syndrome program or donate to it you can go to their website at kdsp.org.pk and do check out be gutsy on instagram be.gutsy.pk see you next time bye Ooh.